Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ashley's Digital China. Today we're going to talk about China's national day holidays or the Golden Week, domestic trips, travel retail and its impact on the rise of Hainan this year and beyond. Back in 1949, on October 1st, Mao Zedong proclaimed the founding of the People's Republic of China from atop of Beijing's Tiananmen Gate. This marked the end of a bitter civil war. Same year, in December, the Chinese government passed the resolution on the National Day of the People's Republic of China, declaring that October 1st will be the day. So what happens during these National Day celebrations? Like in most countries, the National Day's official celebration starts with a flag-raising ceremony on the country's main Tiananmen Square at 6 a.m. in the morning. Some people from around the country would even travel to Beijing to witness this ceremony. It is then followed by the national mourning of people who fell during the Civil War and then Grand Evening TV Gala at night. But when has the National Day become the seven-day holiday and why is it also called the Golden Week? It was announced back in 1999 when the Chinese government expanded the celebrations to several days to give its citizens a seven-day vacation period. During this long public holiday, almost all businesses, factories, as well as government organizations back then would be closed. So people could travel. The pre-holiday rush often starts three or four weeks before the holidays, and shippers will stock up and ship their cargo out of China before this long break. That's often affecting business transportation and logistics. The reason behind making this long holiday was back then to boost domestic traveling within China and the consumption, of course. Today, the National Day holiday is the business travel season of the year, along with CNY, Chinese New Year. Since this is such a golden time to travel, people started calling it the Golden Week. But does seven days of public holiday sound too good to be true? That's because it is. While on paper, it appears we have seven days off for National Day holidays from October 1st to 7th, in reality, two or three weekends around the holidays are typically replaced with one-day weekends. Also, when we say Golden Week in China, it's not just about the National Day Golden Week. In fact, the seven-day Labor Day holidays in May and the Spring Festival holidays is also called the Golden Week. First, Chinese traveled domestically and later internationally. In 2019, China was ranked top in overseas travel consumption worldwide with overseas travel expenditure reaching 127 and a half billion US dollars. As outbound travel is likely to be difficult in the next one or two years due to COVID-related travel restrictions, today tourism companies in China are putting more effort in meeting the domestic travel demand. And most Chinese holidaymakers now choose domestic tourism, same province travel or even same city staycations. Since the 1980s, the travel and tourism industry has been an important driver for China's domestic economy. And in 2019, the nation's tourism industry contributed 10.9 trillion yuan to China's GDP, which is around 11% of the country's total GDP. Since early 2000s, due to both COVID-19 fears and travel restrictions, the numbers of domestic travelers have also dropped sharply. But the good news is that the domestic tourism economy is making a strong recovery. And it is expected that by 2024, China will become the country with highest domestic travel consumption, reaching over 1.2 trillion US dollars in 2024. In 2020, 637 million people traveled during the Golden Week. And this year, despite small COVID-19 outbreaks in a few provinces across the country, 650 million people are expected to travel, which is an 80% recovery versus the 2019 peak. But long public holidays are not without their downsides. These compulsory days off create demand supply imbalances, especially in tourism. Crowds are everywhere, popular attractions, hotels, restaurants, see price hikes. The prices of plane tickets this year alone have increased 10% compared to regular days. According to Sea Trip's National Holiday Estimation Report, the National Day Attractions bookings have increased 30% compared to last year, showing a steady, again, recovery in domestic traveling market. So who are the 650 million travelers this golden week? Indeed, more than 57% of travelers are women and over 50% are aged below 35. Domestic travelers in China are becoming younger. The post-2000 travelers are growing about 5% year on year. 
Young travelers also mean creating new experiences for them. And that's what Chinese travel industry was doing in the past year. We have giraffes roaming in African themed safaris. We have underwater submerged rooms and we have virtual reality parks and so much more. Besides traveling, holidays in China also means shopping and shopping big. While previously one could travel abroad and buy duty-free there, today the choice is between cross-border e-commerce marketplaces both online and offline and domestically available duty-free offering. The proportion of domestic offline channel purchases rose from 32% in 2019 to 59% in 2020. The trend of local consumers starting to buy domestically again has given birth to new purchase channels. Speaking of travel retail, duty-free is not to be missed out. It not only plays a big role in travel industry in China, but also worldwide. You might be surprised to learn that in 2019, Chinese holidaymakers contributed up to 40% of the world's duty-free consumption, making China the top country in duty-free consumption globally. Let's note that travel retail is a term that commonly refers to sales made in travel environments, where customers require proof to travel to access the commercial area, but which are not subject to taxes and duties. It's not like purchasing from a regular department store near where you live. You need to show proof of travel in order to purchase your duty-free goods. Offshore Chinese tourists must meet these three conditions to enjoy duty-free. Tourists must show proper identification, including a purchase travel ticket and an eligible ID card. Since there's such a high demand for duty-free within China, duty-free stores are now offering better online options for customers. To purchase, for instance, online and pick it up in person, or to purchase in person and pick it up in their preferred store, or have it delivered to their homes. This year in April, the Sunrise Duty Free has increased up to 533 brands in their app to offer Chinese customers to purchase through their e-commerce channel. This brings our attention to Hainan and its signature travel plus duty free model. Why Hainan? because there are nine duty-free stores in total, making Hainan the duty-free island. As Hainan's off-island duty-free policy further expanded and relaxed in July 2020, the shopping quota per person has increased to 100,000 yuan per year. With less restrictions and increased options to purchase from, it's expected that Hainan duty-free consumption will continue to grow. So what's so special about Hainan? With the high consumption, Demand from Chinese tourists, Hainan Duty Free is a must visit for those who would like to purchase luxury goods and cosmetics with valuable deals during the holidays. But isn't Hainan known as a tropical paradise for its food and great hotels and beaches? Yes, indeed, majority of Chinese travelers visit Hainan for leisure, but 39% of Hainan travelers come for shopping first. In 2020, last year's Golden Week, the retail sales in Hainan reached 1 billion yuan, which was 148.7% growth compared to 2019. The number of shoppers and spending per person have increased 44 and 73% respectively. Due to such high demand of duty-free shopping in the island, department stores in Hainan held discount events which further boosted consumption and led to over 100 million revenue per day during the Golden Week in 2020. Travel retail plays an important role while you are on holidays and the experience in China is becoming more and more customized and digital. The merger of online and online is ongoing. The smart cloud shelves, for instance, in JD's new offline stores not only allow buyers to purchase by scanning a QR code, but also allow merchants to monitor the sales status of different products and provide further stocking suggestions. The contactless experience a new milestone in digital transformation, especially during the COVID-19 era, and the innovation of service is now being offered in sales outlets, such as digital price tags and contactless payments methods. Other things such as intelligent and virtual makeup stations, facial recognition and style recommendations, and VR, AR shopping experiences and more are now expected by the Chinese tourists in retail environments. Not only offline stores, but online experiences too need to be further invested in and developed. Many brands and retailers are partnering with China's tech giants for new operation model, better experience and logistics. 
Many are building their own WeChat mini programs and apps to accommodate demand and new realities of Chinese travelers. Tech giants themselves are very much interested and invested in the duty-free business in the country. They not only offer cross-border e-commerce marketplaces and shops, both online and offline, but also invest directly in duty-free chains. Last year, for example, Alibaba made an equity investment in Swiss duty-free chain Dufri. And both agreed to form a strategic joint venture in China to partner in the Chinese travel retail market. It's hard to ignore that China's tourism industry and the travel retail are changing fast and it's now 100% domestic and full of new experiences, opportunities and expectations. Conveniently merging online and offline. And this is likely just the beginning. Think two years down the road when global traveling might return and the Chinese holiday makers are coming out of the country. Their expectations, demands are also going to be different versus 2019 for sure. So remember, China has more than one golden week. Tourism is very desirable. Travel retail continues to grow. For brands and retailers alike, it is crucial to adjust fast and prepare well. This is it for today's episode of Ashley's Digital China. Stay tuned for more episodes to come and please let me know in the comments below what are some of the topics you would like me to cover. Have a great day and we chat soon.